Hey everyone, welcome to week five of your math series. You're listening to the Let's Talk Teaching podcast with your host, Kayla Durkin. I'm the face behind North Dakota Teaching. If we haven't met yet, please come on over and say, hey, I would love to get to know you just a little bit better. Today we have Kristen on from Damon's Algebra Room, and she is going to be sharing some really awesome techniques with you that you can use in your math classroom or really in any classroom. So let's bring her in. Hey, Kristen, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Okay, let's see. I have been in the teaching game for nine years. This is my ninth year. Um, I've taught four years in the middle school setting, so sixth, seventh, eighth. And then this is my fifth year up at the high school teaching freshman algebra. Um, Very interesting. So yeah. So how's everything going this year? Do you feel like you're a little bit back to normal? I would definitely say the school that I'm at is definitely heading towards more normal. Um, I'm hoping that I can say at the end of this year, next year will basically be like it used to be. So yeah. That's so good to hear. Okay, so you're here to tell us a little bit about some strategies that you use in your classroom. So what do you want to share with us today? I would love to share about incorporating games into the math classroom or really any classroom, but definitely I have some strategies and some games to share with you guys that you can use throughout the unit or definitely without doubt at the end. Very cool. So let's hear about it. Why don't you tell us your favorite one to use first? Okay. So definitely my favorite one is lottery and you probably have heard it or seen it somewhere throughout Instagram. I think I found it maybe four or five years ago now. Um, I, that tends to be my go-to because it's not a speed game. It's an actual like way to incorporate them fully thinking through and going at their own pace. Um, I enjoy it because it incorporates a lot of movement. Um, And I, so the way that I set it up is they solve one problem and then they bring it up to me. So it gives me that chance to kind of conference with each kid individual. And then if they get it right, they will go ahead and they will put their initials up on the board on a oh, let's let's pretend someone has never heard of this whatsoever before what do they need to know all right so here's what you need to know and what you need to set it up you need a number chart so i always use a 200 or 300 depending on the topic if it's like a really fast topic numbers will fill up a lot quicker than if it takes there's more steps involved in the problem solving um so however many you think you want and i always project mine on the board i know some people do it individual like on a paper but for me i just post it up on the board and then you need some type of questions so it's really easy setup you do not need a lot at all Okay, and so your questions, are these coming from questions that you've made up? Are they coming from what's in your curriculum? Where are you pulling your questions from? Um, They are definitely on what I am teaching. So you can print off a worksheet and you can use them. I normally create my own and uh, I have done task cards before. You can honestly use whatever questions you want. I love that because that means it would work for any subject, any grade. You can modify it to work with anyone really. Oh, definitely. You can use it in any class. I would say any grade, probably first and up, honestly. Yeah. 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 Well, anything else people should know about the lottery game? It sounds super fun. Um, not really. It's just fun to watch when I draw a number at the end and kids are like, Oh, and I love it when no one, no one gets strong. They're like, can you draw another one? And I'm like, nope. (laughs) I'm excited for the next time that we play it again. Oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. Okay. So then you also told me a little bit about a game called shuffle. Tell us from start to finish all about that one as well. Okay. So I've recently shared this, um, with the staff that I work with and definitely this is a game that can be used with littles. I've had feedback already from teachers within the district as low as first grade who have used it and incorporated it and they really enjoy it. 
So I got the idea from actually playing shuffleboard and it's that same concept. So I use my ledge, but you could use a table, you could use whatever you want. And I mark off zones and those zones have different point values. And then it's as simple as kids taking something and sliding it down the rail or sliding it down to the table. And then wherever their token ends up, that's how many points that they receive. Um, my class definitely liked to throw in some like take away from other teams. And so you really can just make it work with whatever your kids want to do and change. Um, each class period, it was something different that my students wanted to incorporate. So they their voice was heard basically in the game, which I had liked. Um, so for Shuffle, again, you have to have some type of content questions. It doesn't really matter the content. And you would pose a question on the board, everybody would solve it. I normally play in groups of three or four. So then that way students have more of an opportunity to slide the dice down the rail. But I let them off A, B, and C. Everybody does the problem. And then I would call on any letter to give me their answer. So then that way it brings the accountability piece into play. And if they got it right, then they would get to go and they would slide for their team. That's so cool. And so I've already seen this on your Instagram reels. So anyone who is listening to this right now and wants a visual, you should definitely head on over to Kristen's Instagram so you can watch the reel, but tell us what you are using to slide on your board. So it's actually funny. I started off with erasers and I thought that kids would like the whiteboard erasers, the small ones. And I thought that kids would like it because I always see them sliding them down my marker rail and it drove me nuts. But it turned out that they really didn't like it because they didn't slide as fast as they wanted. <laughs> and so the kids just started coming up with stuff. And so we've landed on dice. That's it so slides cool. really well. And then we did two because they liked how they could strategize by sliding one and then like hitting another. But really you can slide whatever you want. And do you have them slide them one at a time or both at one time? One at a time. Okay. And I saw this on your reel, but for those of you who aren't, so when you talk about your point system, you also have, if it goes too far to a certain amount, they lose points too, right? Yeah. So that's where the kids make it up. Um, if they slide it off the edge, it's nothing. And then some kids threw in a negative 20 zone, but you took that away from another team. Um, one class period, um, put it was at the end, it was a 10 minus 20 and a 50 and then a 100. So you can really do whatever you want for the points. And do you let each of your classes choose what they want before you begin the game? Or do you kind of set it up ahead of time? Um, first period, I set it up and then we we're like playing halfway through and then they'll change it and then I'll leave it. And <laughs> it's kind of just like a never ending cycle all day. Honestly, kids just make it up however they want each class period. That's so fun. And I love that because again, it can work with any grade, any subject doesn't really matter, but you can really modify it to make it work for your students. So I love that. Yeah. And I thought it was really interested or interesting that, um, so one of the classes that doesn't have like photography, they use it in photography and he was really trying to come up with a way to incorporate it because they don't really have like reviews, they basically just take photos. And I thought it was really cool that instead of sliding after they did something, they slide, they slid to figure out what they had to do. So really? like, there was, yeah, it was like, take a black and white photo, take a sports photo. And so depending on what zone they landed in was their actual creation for the day. Oh my gosh. That's really neat. Have you heard of any other teachers using it in any other subjects? Um, First grade teachers have used it, but it was kind of just like mine. They just did the point values. Third grade teacher used it. Fifth grade teacher used it. Um, I think it was English, social studies. And the first grade was subjects of sentences. So yeah. Very cool. That's so cool. So again, if you want to see that one in action, you can head on over to Damon's underscore algebra underscore room. Check out Kristen's reels. That one is a really fun reel to watch. And then we have another game to tell you about today. This one's called Fast Hands. Yep. So like I said, I don't really like speed games when it comes to math, but if I do this as one of my go-tos, I 
So I have a preset of questions ready to go. And then I type out all of the answers with some fluff answers thrown in on a piece of paper and a grid. So your grid will be depending on how many questions you have. And I put that one piece of paper in between two students and those students are playing against each other. I will post a question on the board. They will solve it and whoever solves it and finds the answer and points to the answer the quickest gets to color in that square. And then we play the entire class period and then the student with the most colors wins. Very cool. And that one, again, you could adapt it, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, depending how big your square is, maybe trying to have them create a shape out of other coloring in something like that. Oh yeah. Like sometimes we'll do like four, you got to get four in a row or we'll play four corners. Like you can really do whatever you want with it. Awesome. So those are the three games you planned on sharing today. Do you have any other things that you typically use just to keep engagement up in your classroom that you'd like to share about? Well, for engagement, I really try to incorporate choices. So my kids really like puzzles and then some of them really like just the self-checking digital aspect. Um, for me, I definitely like more of the movement. So like the scavenger hunts and the puzzles and anything that I can physically see them doing. Mm -hmm. um, when it's more so just paper and writing, I feel like it's really hard for me to catch students who are not understanding and they kind of slide under the radar. So for me, if I can see them physically moving or building something, it kind of provides me with that feedback of who I need to help versus who's good to go. Yeah. And so I used a lot of scavenger hunts in my classrooms. My students absolutely love it, but I also know that there are going to be teachers who are listening today that don't necessarily understand how that works or can visualize it. So do you want to walk us through that a little bit? Yeah, I can try. Sometimes <laughs> it's really hard, I feel like, just with words. Um, so it's kind of like a trail mm -hmm. and students start at whatever card they want. There's no order that you need to start in and they would go to the question, they would solve the question and then that questions answer is posted somewhere else around the classroom mm -hmm. and they would have to go and they would find it and then that where they find their answer at the next question would also be posted. So, so it kind things, of makes the circle. Right and things I love about scavenger hunts are if you you have to get the answer right to mm -hmm. know what question you need to go to next. So right then and there, that's kind of like a built-in checking system. If students aren't getting the answer right, then they're not going to be able to find the next task card that matches up with theirs. Another thing that I really love about scavenger hunts, and this can kind of be a management thing, but you can differentiate a lot as well. For me, I had a pretty small classroom, so I would hang one set of task cards inside of the classroom and then another set inside of the hallway, and I'd kind of monitor in the doorway. That way I could have one group of students working on a certain set in the hallway, one group of students working in the classroom. It would kind of split up how many bodies are working to help with the congestion, but also I could tailor it to their needs as well. So there are a ton of options. I absolutely love using scavenger hunts. And with that, I mean, it's such a great opportunity to build relationships. And I know you have a relationship tip that you love. Why don't you share that with us? All right. So my relationship tip that I love is honestly giving genuine compliments. So I told myself that my goal is to give out five per class period, like something my go-tos that I try to look for are shoes, like whose shoes I can point out if I like their shoes, their clothes. Definitely, I always look for new hairstyles, just something that shows them that I see them. And I don't want anybody to go on notice throughout a class period. And students are always so proud when they come in with a new haircut or a new pair of shoes or whatever it is. So I think that's so awesome that you're paying attention to those fine details and just being authentic in the compliments that you are giving them goes so far because they know when you're just saying things just to say them versus when you're saying it because you actually mean it and you're noticing those things. Yes. And they, they really do notice. <laughs> so I love that. It's not anything big. It's not anything hard. It's just paying attention to your students and showing them that you care about them. So that's awesome. So with that, I also know that you have a favorite management strategy. Do you want to share a little bit about that? 
I do. So peer teaching is my absolute go-to. Um, in my classroom where my kids sit, they either sit in an A desk or they sit in a B desk. And that, that role is basically when they are working, if I can call out on A's, show your partner, they know right away who's speaking and what they're doing. Um, so some of my kids, depending again on the class period and what they want, it's kind of different for each kid. I always call it peer teaching, but I can say it's like coaching. You're definitely not the master. I don't expect you to replace me. I don't expect perfect vocabulary. Um, I really just set the stage that this is the time where the mistakes need to be made. And the more that you're catching off of each other, the better it is for you in the outcome, or I mean, in the long run, because you are definitely deepening your understanding of the content. And so I just absolutely love peer teaching. Oh, awesome. I love that. I think that's just another opportunity too to give those students a little bit of choice in what they're sharing, hear their voices, hear what they know, be able to walk around, circulate. I think that's so awesome. I'm so glad you use that. And so with all this, you have a lot going on in your classroom. You're keeping your bodies moving. You're playing these fun games. And so the class day can probably sometimes get a little chaotic and um, getting ready to leave for the day can sometimes be a little chaotic as well. So how do you manage all of that? Yeah, so my favorite tip that I learned, actually, it was from randomly, a random conversation one day in the library, and it is called the two-minute warning bell. So every class period, I actually put it on the students. So I pick one student per class to be my timer, and they set a reoccurring alarm on their cell phone, and it goes off when there's two minutes left. Um I love it mainly for my sanity because I could not stand when we all know class is getting close to getting over and like every kid stops paying attention and they want to start packing up their bag and they're disrespectful and it's so loud. And so now with this two minute bell, I don't have to worry about any of that. Like we work up straight to that two minute bell. And then after that, they have two minutes to pack up, gather supplies, mix and clip their puzzles, put them back, um, and then to line up at the front to play rock, paper, scissors. So it's honestly more for me than it is them, but I love it and I will never get rid of it. It takes out a lot of stress for you trying to get your students to, because we all want to work bell to bell. That's so important that we use every minute of the class period, but those two minutes that you are providing to them, it's those two minutes that they know, okay, this is our time to get out what we need, do whatever we need to do, but you can also be circulating too and building relationships, playing that rock, paper, scissors in the line. So that's phenomenal. Thank you so much for sharing that tip with us. So I know with all the things you've shared, they're all gold. They are all going to be things that teachers can use in their classrooms. And of course, we want them to be able to reach out to you and ask questions if they have them. But you have something to share with everyone listening today too, right? Yeah. So I do have a free equations um, collect and find. So that's my newest line in my store. And I just love it because it incorporates those early finishers or something for them to do. Um, so it's a multi-step equations and it's all digital and so yeah. tell us what's a collect and find. So my collect and find line is on Google sheets and each question they answer, they will earn an object after they have collected all 10 objects, it releases an I spy picture. And then those objects that they just collected throughout solving um, each question, then they have to go and they find it in the collage. Very cool. And so what grades do you recommend this freebie for? I would definitely say eighth grade or freshman. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for everything you shared today. Where can people reach out to you if they have questions? They can find me on Instagram at Damon's Algebra Room or my website at Damon's Algebra Room.com. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks again for listening to this podcast episode. Please, please, please go down below, leave us a review. I say this every single week. I think I've said it five weeks in a row now, and I still haven't seen one single new review yet. So you sitting there listening to me, I'm calling you out. Please go leave me a review. Let's help other people find this podcast. And with that, we have one more week left in this series, and then we are completely switching gears. If you know any first-tier 
teachers, please find them. Please send them my way. Bring them to this podcast. Starting in April, we are going to be sharing a lot of information for them. So calling all first year teachers, send them my way. And with that, I will see you next week for our very last episode of this math series.